Peace and blessings to you, family. This is your sister in Christ, Lady Summer, coming to you with another message from the Holy Spirit. And I believe that the theme this week is many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Woke up this morning to rain and the ginormous heavenly clouds sitting on the mountains, which always signifies to me that the Lord is here. He's come down. He is dwelling amongst his people and he is my God, the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is therein is my God. This message began last night, and the title of it is, The Lord Heard Me in the Accepted Time, the Appointed Times of the Lord, Exodus and the Passover. And my opening scripture is, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion have roared, who will not fear. The Lord God have spoken. Who can but prophesy? That's Amos 3, 7 and 8. And the next scripture is, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. See, I cried out to the Lord, at the appointed times of God. And it was a very important one, and I did not know it at the time. I was experiencing a lot of distress. I was being tormented. I had done a lot of things leading up to that point. And one of them was that I was outside of God's will. He had chosen me <laughs> before I was born. And I didn't know it. And on April 9th, I had actually called to check myself into a mental hospital because I had been hearing to kill myself. And I was very distraught. And it was, I'm going to call her an angel of the Lord that said, you need to forgive yourself. Whatever it is, like everything is going to be okay. But she said, let me check your insurance to see when you could check yourself out because the thing was she said you can check yourself in but you can't check yourself out it would depend on the doctor and i said oh well when would the doctor release me she said who knows it would be up to them so i went from crying to hysterically laughing and i said oh no that's not for me so I literally was sitting like in front of a grocery store at this time, talking to this lady on the phone. And I hung up the phone. I didn't even go in the store. I drove home immediately. I went upstairs to my room, out on my knees, and I cried out to the Lord. And I asked him to take my pain, exchange it for his joy, I told him I cannot go any longer without hearing his voice and I needed him to talk to me and when he began to talk to me I told him please do not stop talking to me I need to hear your voice I told him I was alone here and I didn't want to be without my family anymore and I told him I needed him to hold me <laughs> and I got in the bed I put my head at the foot of the bed and I literally that night felt a presence very strong holding me I couldn't look back it was a bright light behind me and when I woke up that morning I felt that heaviness come off of me and there was a dove that was above my doorpost I tell this story quite often and that dove which was a baby boy dove, sent me to living praise. And I was already there serving the homeless because I was just trying to do everything for the Lord, nothing for me. 
I just wanted to get my mind off of myself and begin to help his people. And so I was already serving there in that capacity, but I had not attended one service. And so on April 10th, I heard the prophetess say, I am that I am, and I am all you need. And that was an answer to my prayer. And she was actually in Exodus 3 discussing Moses and him asking the Lord, who shall I say sent me? And Exodus 3 is titled the angel of the Lord. And in verse 7, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token, a sign unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. I was Exodus 3 again, and that was verse 7 all the way through to verse 15. And he said, I am that I am is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. So when we say, I am, we're actually saying his name. And right after he says that to Moses, then he tells him to go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared unto me saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land. And they shall hearken to thy voice and thou shalt come thou and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt. And you shall say unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrews have met with us and now let us go we beseech thee three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God so the thing about the time that I prayed that I didn't realize is that April 9 is a Jewish holiday it was actually the Sabbath and that was the time of Pesach and Passover, which is the exodus of the Jews from Egypt. And it is celebrated, listen to this, with the eight day festival of Passover. 
that's what I was just talking about in my last couple of posts that we are the 8th day assembly and let me tell you something else very special about April 9 after Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene on Sunday morning April 9 in 30 AD he ascended to the Father in heaven this is in John listen to this 2017 because it was in 2017 the next year in the same month that I'm about to talk about something else that happened to me um, in May that I saw an angel standing in the sun and other things had happened from the wind to cabinets opening up in my house and the Lord was speaking to me sending the Holy Spirit I was being visited and exactly four months later which is a season to the date it was the perfect planet alignment. And it was just two days prior to that that it was Rosh Hashanah. It was the head of the year, which is the Jewish New Year. And it was also the days of Ah, which is celebrated 10 days before Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day of the year. All this is important because these are the feast times that were appointed by God. So the Lord's ascension was a type of first fruit from the dead, as it speaks about in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. And it says, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And I know now that that blood courses through my veins. And Jesus' ascension occurred on the day God told the Israelites they were to wave a sheaf composed of first fruits of their harvest. This is in Leviticus 23. Listen to the verses 9 through 11. And Leviticus 23 is about the sacred calendar. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap a harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And that 9-11 means get into alignment with God's word, which brings us to today's day. It is October 25th on our Gregorian calendar, 2023. And 25 represents grace upon grace. And on the Hebrew calendar, it is the 10th of Hezron. And remember, we are in the time of go out, go forth, get going. For Moses and the children of Israel, and even for Abraham, when they were told to go forth or to leave, it was a physical thing. For us, it is a spiritual thing. This is what the Lord said to me. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. These are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate saith the Lord. And the word of the Lord of hosts came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, 
and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feast. Therefore love the truth and peace. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. And that's Zechariah 8. Listen to the verses 14 through 21. And I was saying how the seven years of plenty where he poured out so heavily on me, I didn't have room enough. I didn't have enough books. I didn't have enough notes in my computer, on my phone. I didn't have enough space in my mind and head to wrap around all the things that the Lord was going to reveal to me. But for me, it was the seven years of plenty. So Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. None of this that I'm telling you is for me to receive the glory. It's for the Lord to receive the glory. Because it was on April 9th, that the count of 50 days to the feast of Pentecost began. And in the New Testament, the word Pentecost comes from the Greek word for 50th. I turned 50 in 2020, the year of the Lord. It's Strong's Concordance G4005, also known as the Feast of Weeks of First Fruits. It was on this special holy day that God first poured his Holy Spirit upon about 120 believers, 120 believers who had gathered to keep the day. That was Acts 1, 15, also Acts chapter 2. They became the first fruits of God's spiritual harvest of humans. So 50 days after I prayed, ended up being May 29, 2016. And when I went to that day this morning, I was overwhelmed. Because when I woke up that morning, I wrote, I am free. So you have to look back at that time. I was being told to kill myself. I was distraught. I was de depressed. I was agitated, irritated, being tormented. But I got down on my knees and I totally surrendered to the Lord and he answered me and it was in the accepted time of the Lord and I went to the building that morning as I've said in my previous post they were prophesying during this time and I was listening and writing it down just like he told me to do and this is what he said to me on that day I am with you I gave you the keys to open the lock you have been set free. And one of the songs that was played that day was called Limp by Jonathan McReynolds. And I had been really enjoying this CD. I would listen to it as I walked in worship. And so on this day, this 50th day after I prayed, and it was, I prayed during the time of the sock and Passover, not knowing that these were his times because I hadn't studied the calendar and found out the foundation of it yet. But the Lord was speaking to me and that he told me, keep walking with the Lord. Don't quit no matter what you see. And I'm going to play a little bit of the song because I feel like it will encourage somebody. I do not own the rights to this music, so I'm claiming fair use. This is a copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Here's the song.
filled up, not to shame, not to shrink. I wasn't unworthy. I wasn't unfit. None of those things should have been coming in and out of my mind. He told me I can be whatever he had put inside of me to be. And he told me <laughs> a few years later, you were born to live a holy life. I was born on Resurrection Sunday. I was born on Hope Street. <laughs> I hear the voice of the Lord. And he told me that good communication ministers to people. It ministers grace and benefit. And it enables you. It gives you an advantage to feel the excellence of his glory. And I actually felt that this morning. I have a little bit of a testimony, but I'll get to it later. And on this day, I wrote, where did you get the image you have in your head? Where did you get the image of yourself? in your head if you got it from a source that wasn't god then you need to stop thinking about those things i wrote don't fool yourself about possibility your potential your power see i wasn't speaking up for myself i wasn't using god's word and his name i didn't know the power that i had in him so i had to learn to love myself loving who he created me to be. I had to accept myself because that was the sole purpose of the chatter that I was hearing, the torment that I was hearing. It was to get me to defeat myself because I figured out that I was pretty much like, no, where the Lord told Satan, you can test him, but don't take his life. So he does things, especially if you Ask your foot on the stone or open the door up to him. He'll try to cause you to take yourself out because he can't do it. Not when you are a child of the most high God. And that's when he gave me Philippians 4, 8. Think on these things. Meditate in the word. Abide in God. Look into the mirror of the word. You have to listen to the word consistently. You have to cast down every thought that doesn't agree with God's purpose in your life. By doing this, you quench the fiery darts. You squash them. And this is where he told me to put on the armor because the helmet protects your thoughts. The breastplate of righteousness protects your heart. And it justifies you in God. You have to protect your hearing. So the girdle of truth protects your hearing. It protects your harmony. God says he will give me the desires of my heart. Peace with God means you and God are one. And the shield of faith protects what's in your head. So the sword of the spirit protects what's in your house. And remember, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. That's the seed that he planted in my heart after I called out to him and surrendered to him. He gave me this scripture. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth, and I will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. Then thou shalt remember thy ways and be ashamed, when thou shalt receive thy sisters, thine elder and thy younger, and I will give them unto thee for daughters, but not by thy covenant. And I will establish my covenant with thee, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, that thou mayest remember and be confounded, and never open thy mouth any more because of thy shame, when I am pacified toward thee for all that thou hast done, saith the Lord God. It was on April 9th that I cried out to him, and I asked him, forgive me. You know, and I told him, if you do these things that I'm asking you to do, I will live for you and I will do whatever you tell me to do. And that day he gave me, again, Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God. 50 days after I prayed that prayer, which is the same amount of days for Pentecost, which is now in the age that I am, <laughs> I'm 53, put on the whole armor of God, you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world 
against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We're in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You got to know this thing. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints not the world for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that i may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which i am an ambassador in bonds that therein i may speak boldly as i ought to speak that was verses 11 through 20 and the last verse that was given to me for that day was 1 Thessalonians 5, 15 and 22. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirits. You're supposed to be quenching the fiery arts, but not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Something else interesting about that day, April 9, is that it is the sign of Aries, the zodiac sign of Aries, the ram in the bush. And the book of Joshua indicates that by the time of Moses, the equinoxes had already shifted from Taurus to Aries, as Moses had ordained the civil year should commence with the month of Nisan, which is Aries, rather than the month of Taurus, a bull. And when I was born um, on Resurrection Sunday, Hope Street, <laughs> it was the time of Aries. During the age of Aries, several powerful empires, including the Assyrians, the Persians, the Greeks, and Romans, rose to prominence. Mainstream history during this period is characterized by territorial conquest and the spread of cultural and political influence. Then we had Moses, or we had Moses before that. Moses is a mortal hero who is highly symbolic of the ego itself. Like Moses, the ego can liberate us from enslavement to our past and our unconscious fusion to the mass psyche. It can birth an identity that brings us to the very edge of the promised land of the soul. But at the end of the journey, the ego cannot enter this promised land. The soul can indeed enter the ego. And therein we find both the limitations and the ultimate fulfillment of ego development. Still, Moses did much more than just liberate his people from Egypt. Like Alexander the Great in his heroic quest, Moses was the Aries epitome of courage loyalty, vision, determination, leadership, and faith in his unseen one God, Yahweh, the great I am. In condemning the worship of the golden calf, the Taurus, he symbolically declared a new age had begun, an age that needed something to guide human ego development something besides aggression and war in which he gave the balance and polar opposite to Aries, the Libran law of the Ten Commandments, like the Libra. And I'm going to stop right there because September 23rd 
2017, the perfect planet alignment, it was the first day of Libra. Libra is the only constellation that's represented by an inanimate object, which is the scales of justice. So we're right back to the Lord and the Ten Commandments. Because 2017 was the year of implementation of God's plan. So Moses also gave instructions in the building of the Ark of the Covenant that included a covering for the tabernacle made of ram's skin and a new altar with four horns at its corners. That was a type and shadow of the harvest, the last and fourth kingdoms, gleaning of the four corners of the field which was left for the poor and the needy and the strangers and the widows. So listen to this. As the age of Aries progressed and ego development began to move from tribal to individual, people became more cognizant of their own power and capacity to reason that perhaps war and aggression weren't the best ways to engage with the development of individual identity. After all, what good was establishing an identity Aries if we couldn't relate it to others, Libra, without getting killed? We were in dire need of the archetypal energy of Libra, which deals in part with relating peacefully in a spirit of equanimity with each other. So the age of Aries was an age of incredible change. This was both astrologically and archetypally, which the Aries has to do with the development of identity via the ego. Listen to this, the I am that each of us carries within us. Lord always brings it back to himself always confirms his word with me and i'm not talking about astrology here i'm talking about astronomy it's biblical because in genesis 1 and listen it starts at verse 14 and goes to verse 19 and god said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night this is the type and shadow of separation and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made stars also and god set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Number four has to do with not only the physical creation, but it also represents the appointed times of God. He said he set them as signs. So on September 23rd, 2017, that was a Revelation 12 sign. This is how they knew that Moses was coming, that he was going to be born, because it was according to the constellations. And all of the things that were happening with the uh, alignments and the conjunctions, and the same way that they saw that Moses was going to be born, was the same way they saw that Jesus was coming. This is what the shepherds in the field were told by the angels, and this they followed the conjunction to get to Jesus. And we, even in our time in 2020, we had the Bethlehem star up here. We had a lot of things going on that they were trying to stop us from seeing, but you don't have anything to do with that up there. That's all the Lord God Almighty. That is why Jesus said, look up, because your redemption draws nigh. This has to do with Psalm 19, and it also has to do with Psalm 126. Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. And Psalm 126 is a song of degrees, which that was going to be a sign. It was in Isaiah 38, verse 7. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, 
I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. And in 2 Kings verse 20 is where this thing was established of what was spoken was going to happen. And Isaiah asked Hezekiah 10 degrees forward or 10 degrees backward. <laughs> so in Isaiah 38, it was as he had spoken, Hezekiah said it was a light thing to go forward. So he would ask him to move it back 10 degrees. And the thing about Isaiah 38 is that it was Isaiah 38 verse 14 that the Lord gave to me by the Holy Spirit on Purim in the Rosh Kadesh and Valentine's Day. It was a triple holiday. It's on that day that I was visited by the Lord and he gave me Jeremiah 8, 7 and he gave me Isaiah 38, 14. But this thing with Ahaz started back way in Isaiah chapter 7. Listen, verse 14, the three sevens. But it starts in verse 10. Remember, 10 represents God said and God's law and order. And it's titled, The Sign of Emmanuel. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. He was telling him, Ask me. Just like Jeremiah 33, 3, what he told me, Ask me. And I'll share my mysteries with you. He said, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above he was saying here on earth or from the heavens but ahaz said i will not ask neither will i tempt the lord but it was the lord that was speaking to him and telling him to ask and he said hear you now now this is what the lord said to him because he refused to ask the lord he said hear you now o house of david it is a small thing for you to weary men but will you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. He didn't want to ask. So the Lord said, I'm going to give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. Again, that's Isaiah 7. So the Lord gave me the scripture from 1 Corinthians, again, 10, verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. I just told somebody, everything you need to know about life, how to move, what to do, when to do it. It's all written in this book. How to do it, how to do life is written in this book because it is Holy Spirit inspired. The Bible says, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions. This is man's setup. I think about it all the time, the people that are being called royal and kings and priests they are not the lord did not choose them but they are set up in those positions and they are enjoying all of those i'm going to call them ill-gotten gains but anyway it says neither give he to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say 
more aware of, they affirm. It's just not you opening the book and, you know, all willy-nilly off the top, off the rim, as they call it. That's what you think it means. No, the Holy Spirit has to lead you into all truth, understanding, and knowledge of this word. It goes on to say, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who have enabled me, for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry. You hear that? He thanked the Lord because it was the Lord that stopped him in his tracks from going to kill somebody. It was the Lord that blinded him and then sent a prophet to remove the shackles from his eyes. But again, Paul said, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who have enabled me. I remember I was talking about the grace enabling you for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Albeit for this cause, I obtained mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Because remember, he wasn't a part of the 12. He stood and was basically cheering over the death of Stephen. He was on his way to murder the people who were following Christ. So the Lord called out to him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest me? And he was like, who are you, Lord? He says, me, Jesus. But again, he said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Albeit for this cause, I obtained mercy but in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Remember, he told him, you're going to suffer for me. You're going to suffer for my name. For a pattern to them, which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now, unto the King Eternal is capitalized. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Unto the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. First Timothy 1, 4 through 17. I know he lives because during that time that I got on my knees, remember I said I didn't know the time that it was. It was literally Shabbat HaKadosh. It was Friday, April 8, 2016, and ended on Saturday, April 9, 2016. That's the day I prayed. That was the Sabbath of the month, and it precedes the first of the Hebrew month of Nisan, during which Passover is celebrated in Exodus 12, 1 through 20, and the laws of Passover. And remember what Passover was about, slaying the unblemished lamb, taking the blood of that unblemished lamb and putting it over the doorpost so that when the death angel came over, he wouldn't kill anybody with the blood over their doorpost. This was when God presented the first commandment of how to sanctify the new moon for the onset of Rosh Kadesh. 
and thus Nisan becomes the first month of the Jewish year, counting by months. And that's the thing about the Rosh Kadesh, it was given to the daughters because we waited on Moses. They waited on Moses, I waited on the Lord, and he came. Also, the Torah portion reading during that time on Saturday, April 9, 2016, was Leviticus 12 through to 13, also Numbers 28, 9 through 15, Exodus 12, 1 through 20, and Ezekiel 45, verses 16, all the way through to Ezekiel 46, verse 18. These scriptures were being read at that time. And Leviticus 12 is about conceiving when a woman has conceived a seed and born a man child and then it also speaks about when she conceives and bores a, a female that's when the eighth day of the flesh of the foreskin is circumcised for the sons is when she bear a maid child then she'll be unclean for two weeks as in her separation she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days and when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, this is what she had to do. She had to bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering. This is the word she had to bring it. Unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest who would offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her. But again, thanks be to Jesus because he is our advocate with the father he was the sacrificial lamb the word says my little children these things write i unto you that you sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments he that saith i know him and keepeth not his commandments who the lord he that saith i know him and keepeth not his words his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of god perfected hereby know we that we are in him he that saith he abided in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Who? As Christ Jesus walked. It's 1 John 2, 1 through 6. Leviticus 13 was about the leprosy, which Jesus did that as well. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 5, it says the blind received their sight. Remember, this is the message that he sent back to John the Baptist. He said, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. See, this was significant. The poor having the gospel preached to them. Because I just said in my post yesterday that it was very expensive, those scrolls, and only the had access to them and you had to rely on what they told you but Jesus came to give you the truth he wasn't charging for the word people that really appreciated and knew what Jesus was doing they were blessing him but he said the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. I remember I was downtown one time helping to feed the homeless and she would always have me stand over to the side and anybody who wanted prayer could come over and I would pray for them. And I would always, most times, end up with this pretty long line. <laughs> Some people would be like, wow, you know, I'd, I'd have people come back and say the Lord answered your prayer, he answered my prayer, he did this, he did that. Hallelujah. Amen. But that's, you know, what I ended up doing, standing there and praying for people and, you know, laying hands on them or 
you know, just listening. And so one time I had this um, man of color who told me he was a Jew and he was very nasty about it. Don't talk to me about Jesus. And I said to him, but Jesus was a Jew. But you're saying you're a Jew, but you don't want to listen to his words. But Jesus was telling us not to be offended in him because if you're offended and you turn away from him, it's the same as denying the Holy Spirit. It's the same as um, quenching the Holy Spirit. It's the same as blaspheming because the works that he did and the things that he said proved who he was. Lastly, um, Ezekiel 46 says this towards the end. Thus said the Lord God, if the prince give the gift unto any of his sons, and remember Jesus is listed as a prince in uh, Revelation 1. If the prince give a gift unto any of his sons, the inheritance thereof shall be his sons. It shall be their possession by inheritance. But if he give a gift of his inheritance to one of his servants, then it shall be his to the year of liberty. After it shall return to the prince, but his inheritance shall be his sons for them. Moreover, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession, but he shall give his son's inheritance out of his own possession, that my people be not scattered every man from his possession. Revelation 11:15 says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. It all belongs to the Lord, but what I said yesterday that Jesus said when he was walking the earth in his earthly ministry, he said, that the scribes and the Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses. And this is why he told them in Mark 12, what shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others. And have you not read the scripture, the stone which the builders rejected, because they rejected Jesus up until his death, is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eye. Anything too hard for the Lord. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. He gave me that scripture, Genesis eighteen fourteen, Because he said, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee. And he said, behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. The Lord told us what to do when we saw what Daniel the prophet spoke of. He said, The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia, and the rough goat is the king of Grisha, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce continents and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut thou up the vision for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. That was Daniel 8, 19 through 27. And that's pretty much what happened to me. When I had my dream in 2018, I had no understanding of it. But it was clear and vivid. 
and he gave it to me on the same night that I had the visitation in the daytime. It would have been something, but when I sought him for the answer, he gave it to me little by little, precept by precept, until I understood that what he said to me was, all of your dreams are going to come true. Do not be afraid because I'm going to be with you. And also what I saw in the dream were the diamond stars and also the father. I discovered in John 14 in verse 22, 22 being revelation, that he wasn't going to show himself or manifest himself to the world. But it was going to be like Habakkuk 2, 3, 4, where the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Oh, it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Because remember, when he had given up the ghost, all of the sins were poured out on him. But here we are after he has risen, living by his faith. Exodus 9, 5 says, And the Lord appointed a set time saying tomorrow the lord shall do this thing in the land the lord is the one who sets the time he is in control of everything nehemiah 13 30 31 says thus cleansed i them from all strangers and appointed the wards of the priest and the levites every one in his business and for the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits remember me oh my god for good. The next scripture he gave me came from Esther 9 30 to 32. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the 127 provinces of the kingdom Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed the matters of the fastings and their cry and the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim and it was written in book. Nehemiah 12 44 says and at that time were some appointed over the chambers for the treasures for the offerings for the first fruits and for the tithes to gather into them out of the fields of the cities the portions of the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priests and for the Levites that waited. The Lord didn't eat the Passover with everybody. He only ate it with his disciples. This is in Mark chapter 14, verse 13 through 15. He said, go you into the city and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there make ready for us. And even before that, because he was always being challenged in Mark 2.19, and the thing is 2.19 is the day I was outside of my body. Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. That was symbolic for eating his flesh and drinking his blood because Fasting is when you don't eat or when you don't do something. But when you're with him, when he's with you, you're always in his presence. You're always reading his word, listening to his word, speaking his word. Because in Matthew 25, the Lord is the bridegroom. And John says he was the friend of the bridegroom. But again, it was on Purim that he gave me the scripture. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. We've been in the time of judgment. You're being judged by God by everything that you do. 
are receiving blessings or cursings from everything that you say and you do. 1 Corinthians 4, 5, Paul said, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Just as the Lord came to Paul, he knew that's the same thing he was going to do to other people. It was the first fruits of the Lord coming and changing him, turning him around, giving him the truth in the spirit. Titus 1.3 says, But having due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me, according to the commandment of God, our Savior. That's what happened to me. I was seeking him in his word, following the leading of the Holy Spirit, as I was dreaming, and then he would send birds and animals and the winds, and I would follow their leading. The Revelation 1.3 says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Revelation was never a sealed and closed book. That's why Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Mark 1 15. Lord is fulfilling his word in real time. Um, I watched a video this morning of how um, it was on Big Judas' channel, how he showed um, this gentleman in the British Museum revealing secrets about America. These records that he viewed privately were pictures of the quote-unquote American Indians, and they were people of color. But that's not the history that you see here. Not to be offensive to anyone, and you shouldn't be offended, but basically, they whitewashed everything. But he gave me this scripture. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Listen to what he says. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halted. Remember? We start off this message. I'm going to keep on walking with my limp. Because that's what halted mean. It's a limp. And gather her that was driven out. And I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Weren't we put to shame, our people here? Are we still being put to shame? Not that all skin folk are kin folk, but you know what I mean. He says, and gather her that was driven out, and I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Zephaniah 3, listen to the verses, 18 through 20. 2018 was the year of transformation and 2019 was the end of the Gentile or unbelieving age and 2020 was the year of the Lord, the year that the flowers appeared on the earth and that the sword was in our land and we heard the voice of the turtle dove. I have two more scriptures to give you and I'm going to end this message. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold which they prepared for Baal therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness and now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and none shall deliver her out of mine hand I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she have said, 
These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Caleb, wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers and forgot me, saith the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her, and I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of acre for a door of hope i'm gonna stop right there because see like solomon took so many wives and he forgot about the lord he amassed so much wealth he forgot about the lord well this is what she did she was looking for love in all the wrong places she didn't even know the treasure that she had inside of herself nor that the Lord was still with her, even in her dirty, letting her fall on her face, waiting for her to return to him, because he already knew she was going to, and he knew what her lovers were going to do. So he said, therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her, and I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of acre for a door of hope and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the day when she came up out of the land of egypt and it shall be at that day saith the lord that thou shalt call me is she and shall call me no more valley for i will take away the names of balaam out of her mouth and they shall no more be remembered by their name and in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord, and thou shalt know the Lord. I know him. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord. I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil and they shall hear Jezreel, and I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy, and I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, like I said earlier, thou art my God. That's Hosea 2, 8 through 23, and that's what was said to me Three days after my dream came true on Christmas Day, Hanukkah, the 25th of Kislev, which was the rededication of Jerusalem, three days later, he told me to write the book in 2016. One of the things that he said on that last night of that year, and it was a Wednesday like today, he said, God already knows what he's going to do about your new thing. When you are in faith, what you have sometimes you don't use. When you start, don't worry how you're going to finish. You won't be able to keep the new thing if you don't have the faith for the new thing. Believe by faith, speak by faith, call and pray. Know with confidence that God will do what he said he will do. The new thing has already been done. He's waiting on you to stand up and pray with him for the new thing. Stand up and be accounted for. God gave us dominion. Walk around and operate by faith. He's God all by himself. He said, he is my God and beside him there is no other. You're going to believe God or you're going to believe your circumstance. And that leads me to my testimony before I give this last scripture and close up this message. So I had a eye doctor appointment today for contact lenses. I was told that I didn't have a copay because I booked my appointment online. 
But long story short, when I got there, I didn't have a copay. I went through the examination. I was so happy to receive my trial pair to try out for two weeks, and I was able to put the three pair of glasses <laughs> that I had to interchange in between away. And she escorted me to another nurse so that I could get an appointment to come back. But when I went in there, um, she told me that I had to pay a certain amount of money in order to keep my trial pair, which I did not have. So when I didn't have it, she got up to go and get me a container to take them out. But I read online that if unexpected charges come up, that I could bill those things and pay it later. So she told me that I couldn't do that. And she was like, you're gonna have to take them out. So I didn't panic because I knew that I would have the money tomorrow. And I could just call one of my sisters and they would, you know, give it to me and I could give it right back to them. So when I called my sister, she had something. And I had already asked the Lord in my head, you know, I knew he was going to work it out because I wasn't going to leave there without my contact lenses. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I am not married. All of my parents and grandparents are deceased. My mother was an only child, so it's not like I have aunts and uncles on that side. I too much have a relationship with my father's side. And my brother just recently had blessed me <laughs> because my oil pan and gasket needed to be replaced and he just blessed me i couldn't go back to him so the lord told me to call my sister she's my sister in christ i don't have any sisters and she didn't really have it because she had some other obligations but while she was on the phone speaking with me her co-worker named brenda was in the restroom and the lord was urging her to go out and ask my sister about her need. And she happened to overhear the conversation that we were having. And so next thing I know in my cash app is an amount over the amount that I needed to walk out of there with my contact. So she told me to call her when I came out so that she could tell me what happened and she actually put Brenda on the line. So Brenda heard me saying how I had just said, the Lord is here. <laughs> because I told you the clouds came and they were sitting on the mountains. I saw this one cloud like drifting over, you know, in the midst of all these other clouds. I always know when I feel his presence strong and the Holy Spirit speaking and moving and doing things. So here was the Holy Spirit speaking to another daughter to inquire if she had any need of help with something she had to do and end up blessing me who had the immediate need. And the thing is, she blessed me and I don't have to pay it back. She said she clearly heard the Lord and me having this situation was a confirmation that she heard the Lord correctly. Go to her and inquire what she needs. And she had what she needed for her. She didn't have the extra. And here this lady had extra in her account and the Lord told her to bless her. And it ended up blessing me. And I told her the Lord is going to bless her because he blesses those who bless me. It's always happened that way. And this is my gift making room for me. This is our inheritance. This is what's supposed to happen. Because the Lord takes care of the Levites. He takes care of his own. This isn't the last scripture, but the Lord gave it to me. It says the heart of the prudent Getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. A man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him before great men. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. The lot causeth contentions to cease, and parteth between the mighty. 
A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contention are like the bars of a castle. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And finally, verse 22, this is Proverbs 18, verse 15 through 22. It says, whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. And Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he added no sorrow with it. When the Lord does it, there's no sorrow that comes with it. Lord did that. <laughs> this is my final scripture for today. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels. I'm going to stop right there. That's why I said he can't be the angel of the Lord because he's the Lord. It says, being made so much better than the angels, as he have by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. He didn't say that to none of the angels. He told the angels to bow down to Adam in the book of Adam and Eve and this is why Adam over there being bowed down to by the angels this is why Satan was in the garden being the snake tempting Eve deceiving Eve because she was deceived God gave her a promise that promise ended up being Jesus crushed the devil's head but it says, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. I am a flame of fire. My name means Jehovah's fire. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation?